Hi guys, welcome to another segment of Legal Friday with me, Francine. So today our focus is on copyright ownership arrangements. So there are generally four ways that someone can own or have ownership rights over work. The first is if you're the sole author. You create the work, you're not doing it with someone else, you're not creating a work of art or authorship on behalf of someone else, you own it outright. That's generally the rule, generally. I mean, there are always some exceptions, but generally if there's no other person involved, you own the rights. But then you might've created a work as a joint relationship with someone else. We're gonna focus on that next week. And then let's say you created a work um, and you licensed it to someone or you assigned those rights to someone. That presents a few more issues. We're gonna talk about licenses and assignments the following week. But for this week, we're going to focus on works made for hire. So works for hire, generally the, copy, the, the general rule of copyright law is the person who creates the work of art or authorship owns the rights unless there was a contract in place or unless it was a work made for hire. So how does work for hire show up? Well, it generally shows up in one of two ways. The first is if you are employed by someone. So if you are employed by someone and within the scope of your employment, you create a work of art or authorship, unless there's a contract in place, you don't own the rights, period. I mean, period. The person who owns the rights is the entity that hired you as an employee. This is not a contractor, this is as an employee. So how might that show up for you? Let's say you're employed by a company and that company hires you to create some fabulous marketing materials. They hire you to create a, a video about their company. They hire you to create a new logo, um, all kinds of really beautiful marketing materials. And let's say they even hired you to throw in um, a, a, an employee handbook. You do not own that work unless there was a contract that said you do. It could be a problem for you if let's say you are employed, but let's say they fire you or lay you off, or let's say you decide to quit, but because you created this stuff, so you thought you're gonna walk out of that employment and go to your next employment and take this beautiful work. No, no, and no. Anything you created for that original employer within the scope of your employment belongs to that employer. You do not have the right to take it with you. And if you do and they find out, believe me, that could be grounds for a copyright infringement lawsuit. The second way that work for hire shows up is with independent contractors. So this becomes really problematic and I can't tell you how often I have clients who just really balk at this but it doesn't matter because this is the law. So anything that's created by an independent contractor, which could be a photographer, it could be that graphic designer, it could be a videographer, anybody who creates original works of art or authorship on your behalf, it could be a ghostwriter, unless you have an agreement, a work for hire agreement that says you own the work, sorry to inform you, but that independent contractor owns the work. That really becomes a problem because often people will say, but wait a second, Francine, I paid for it. It's mine, I paid for it. No, no, and no. You paid for the right to use it, but the ownership of that copyright belongs to the independent contractor. So how do you resolve that? Well, if you've already entered into a relationship and they've and you've already gotten the work, you can always ask them to sign a transfer of copyright. But by that time, they're in the in the driver's seat. They can say, no, I'm not willing to sign it. I'm keeping these rights. So the better thing to do is at the beginning of the relationship to make sure you have a contract in place saying that you own the rights and not them. Okay, that's it for this week. I'm Francine. And this is Legal Friday with Francine. I invite you to think about, do you have any, or is there a situation right now that you're involved in 
where you think you have the right to something because you paid for it, but maybe after this session you discover, mm, I don't. Maybe there's a way you can get a transfer of that copyright. Whatever it is, if it's something really important to you, you might want to consider gaining the rights to that because if not, what might happen? Let's say, for example, you hired someone to design a logo for you and you thought because you uh, paid for that logo that you own it. But let's say down the road, you see that same logo on somebody else's website and then maybe you'll see it on somebody else's website and someone else's website and you become really angry. But the fact is you don't own the rights. And so that graphic designer, that independent contractor is in a position where they can do whatever they want to do. So again, just saying, protect yourself. All right, until next week, I'm Francine and this is Legal Friday with me, Francine. Bye for now. Have a great